Well, I've got to discuss something very confidential. And this is something that has happened over the last few weeks. And I want to share about it because, in a way, it's a vindication of our unusual, <laughs> highly individualistic approach to spiritual life and the fact that what we do is working. So you shouldn't imitate me because it may not be your thing, it may not work for you, but the fact that it does work for me indicates something very special. And I'll get to that after I describe what's happening. Some time ago, I posted a video about the Dream Companion. The dream companion is the goddess. And she has been with me in the dreams for a very long time. Maybe 40 years, at least 30. And at first, her appearance in the dream was kind of, well, it was a little vague who she really was. At that time, I was a Krishna devotee, and I thought it was Krishna because, you know, long, black, curly black hair and like that. Krishna is very, you know, he could, he could be either male or female. And later on, I found out it's described in Tripura Rahasya about goddess Tripura Sundari, that she appears as Krishna. So, you know, it's quite possible that she was there wearing her Krishna aspect or form. But then as time went on, it became more and more clear that she was the goddess, especially after 1984, when she appeared in my room and gave me Shaktipat. Well, she didn't appear in a visible form, but I could sure feel her energy. <laughs> she was very present. So, the more I got involved with the Sri Vidya, the clearer it became that this is actually the goddess. And at first, when she appeared in my dreams, she wouldn't say anything. She wouldn't even look at me. She was just present and sometimes fleetingly so, just coming in and walking through and going out again. But then, starting about two or three years ago, she started to show up and personally interact with me in my dreams. Like one time I was in, I think I described this in one of the videos, I was in a kind of shopping mall and all the shops were closed. The place was empty. So I was going out and I was opening, you know how they have those double doors to keep the AC inside? <laughs> well, I was opening those doors and she was coming out just behind me. And so, yeah, I said, good morning. You know, she said, good morning. And walked out to wherever she was going and I was going out to, the truck, to my truck parked in the parking lot. And I was, wait a minute, who was that? I think that's the first time I can remember where we had personal interaction. And gradually, over the years now, the interactions have become more and more friendly, more and more intimate, more and more a deep communication, until she's like teaching me in the dreams. It's quite extraordinary, it's quite amazing. But lately, over the past few months, she has started to show up in dreams as my wife. 
It's not that there was, you know, a big wedding ceremony or anything like that. It's just like a given, you know, just like assumed. Like, oh yeah, I went one dream I was going to buy a new car. And I wanted a Ferrari. <laughs> it was like, I could have any car I want. I was rich in my dream. So I was looking at this Ferrari, taking it out on country roads, you know, and ringing it out and having a blast. And then I got back and she was saying, you know, we need a more practical car. <laughs> How about a Ford, you know? <laughs> So it's like, she's my wife in the dreams. That's it. It's just, that's the situation that I'm dropped into in the dream. So I think this is very special and extraordinary. The mystical marriage is a very prominent feature in Western mysticism. And, of course, in a Christian context, it's viewed as the marriage of the soul with Jesus, or God. And in the esoteric Western tradition, it's better understood as being the marriage between the limited, conditioned personality, or self, the empirical self, and the higher self within, self with a capital S. So I haven't come across anything about this in the Sri Vidya tradition, but in the Bhakti tradition, there is definitely a tradition of the sadhu becoming the wife of God which gets a little kinky, you know, because most sadhus are male <laughs> and God is a male. So I don't want to get into all the gender issues there. I don't think anybody really believes in it or experiences it anymore. But there's something about like being a gopi in one's spiritual body and uh, approaching God in a female form in the spiritual world or something like that. But it never happened to me, even though one time I went on retreat in the jungles of Kauai and I chanted 64 rounds a day of the Hare Krishna mantra. That's about 8 to 10 hours a day, at least, you know, every day for about six months. And at the end, I had a darshan of Krishna. But it was very, I mean, he was very removed. He was far away. And he just blessed me and said, you will attain me very soon. So what does that mean, right? <laughs> anyway, the other devotees I, that I told about this didn't like it at all. I even wrote a song about it. And really, they just panned it, you know. They were completely dismissive. And, and this is, by the way, a feature of all the close relationships I've had in this life. That the person I was in relationship with, whether a friend or a intimate partner, a significant other, or, you know, someone in another teacher in a spiritual organization or whatever, none of them would accept me as being realized. I don't know why. They have some fanciful notion of the realized being as some kind of Superman with mystic powers and leaping tall buildings in a single pound. I don't know, you know, whatever. Whatever it is, it doesn't look like this. <laughs> but internally, I can say that I meet the criteria described in the scriptures for a realized person. Now, a lot of people are going to object and say, well, you're a tantrika and you have some sexual activities that we don't know anything about, but we sure don't like it. And, you know, uh, it's, you're not like, uh, you don't have the air 
of a guru and all of this. Well, that's deliberate. I don't think I should put on any airs. I think I should just be a normal, approachable, you know, a realistic person and not to have to put on some phony act like, I am enlightened, you know? I mean, come on. What is the use of that? Just to fool gullible people? I don't want followers, you know? If anything, I want friends, and those friends, to be my friend, are gonna have to accept me as the way I am, you know? What you see is what you get. <laughs> I'm not any different off camera than I am on camera. And it would be a lie if I was. So I'd rather be truthful. I'd rather be straightforward and simple and open and honest and tell you that I'm just an ordinary person like you, you know. I, I get up in the morning and make a cup of tea and, you know, dotter around like an old man because I am an old man. But there's something special going on inside. And I remember, I, I don't know why people won't recognize that. I think they're jealous. I think they're envious. I think they're over skeptical. I remember one time, I used to have a really, really valuable flute, solid silver, handmade, blah, 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 blah. But you know, I was getting to the point where I wasn't so much interested in playing music anymore. You know, in the context of spiritual worship, like making mantras and stuff like that, maybe I would just throw in a flute track here and there, but nothing like I used to be. I mean, I used to be known as David the flute player. That was my identity. <laughs> and I did a couple high profile recordings and like that. But anyway, that's all gone. And now I'm really, really a sadhu, and I'm really into it. So I sold my silver flute to this lady from Australia. And so we meet for breakfast to do the deal, right? And we're talking, chatting, this and that. And I mentioned to her, well, you know, I've stopped dating. I've given up dating. And she says, well, why? And I said, because the people that I want to date don't accept me as really who I am. And then we kind of changed the subject and went off. And then we started talking about spiritual stuff. And so, you know, I was doing my whole rap about consciousness, <laughs> four states of consciousness and four yogas and blah, 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 blah. And at the end of this, she looks at me and says, well, you got the words down. And I was like, Phew. and I said to her, that's why I don't date anymore. Because nobody accepts me as being realized. But I know I'm realized. And the way I know it is that I get the internal symptoms. Like I said in another video, I got recognition from God. So I don't need anybody externally to tell me who I am or what stage I'm at or what I should do or what I should think huh? or what I shouldn't do. <laughs> you know, I'm wild tantrika and I've been that way all my life. My mother was like that too. She was a hippie before there were hippies. So I followed in her footsteps and followed my intuition and took my inner guidance as truth. And that has put me at odds with all kinds of external teachers, but guess what? Internally now I'm getting the recognition that I've been on the right path all along. And this is so satisfying, this is so reassuring. You know, it takes away so much anxieties that I know that Ma, well, I can't, it's not to call her Ma, Lalita has got my back. You know, she's going to take care of me like a wife should. And, you know, she just happens to be the most powerful being in the universe. <laughs> 
so do I have any anxieties? <laughs> Not anymore. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.